Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from Clyde, and today we're checking out Lily Barrow is way more overpowered than you think. I can't wait for the Thousand Year Blood Arc to be animated. The fights are going to be so ridiculous and over the top because the Stern Ritters have such OP abilities, it's unreal. And yes, we're going to go into Lily Barrow's and why his is just so freaking stupidly. Here we go. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, they are. Their aesthetic, fighting styles, transformations, the abilities, names of their attacks, and how powerful they are. Yeah. But atop these quins here are a special group of four. A special group whose entire goal is to protect the elite guard of Yuha Bark. Characters so powerful that if you drop them into another anime world as a team, with ease they would clear out a lot Absolutely. of Absolutely. Absolutely. Today I'll be focusing on one of my personal favorite Quincy's, Lily Barrow. Letter X of the Stern Ritter, the one who wields the power of the X axis. It's crazy. The one closest to God. If you're a fan of Bleach, please hit that it's like such button crazy and ability. subscribe if you want more videos like this from me. If you show my channel support, I'll keep making these breakdown videos for Bleach, especially as the anime rolls on. Hell yeah, I can't Another wait. Thing too, watching the video until the very end actually helps me out a lot, so if you do that, it would mean a lot. It's the best way to help my videos grow. Hell yeah. Interestingly, when the elite guard of Yuha Bark first enter the Soul Palace to fight the Zero Division, they do extremely well, with Nehemiah being the main source of conflict to stop them in their tracks. Mm -hmm. I believe as readers, we can all agree that Mr. Kubo definitely missed the mark by not having longer, more drawn-out individual battles between the elite guard Hell yeah, definitely, and like, the Zero Division. Be cool if they add more in the anime. Presented with the idea that the Zero Division was stronger than the Go Team 13 as they were revealed, which is described at the beginning of the war arc, this idea falls flat pretty fast and seems very to much so <laughs> so disappointing. Twenty five percent Nimaya and the remaining fifteen percent to the rest. Though I will give Senjumara some credit as she did give the answer Weisel a very quick exit from the story. As Nimaya tangos with Gerard Valkyrie, Lily Baru, Penida, and Asuka Nakliva, he explains that his sword is so sharp that it needs to be placed into a gel filled box as no sheath can contain the sword. That's cool. Nimaya states that this blade is a one shot kill and basically does this against Gerard, Lily, Penida, and then the unkillable Arsgan. After having some success against the invading Stern Ritter, Yuhabak uses the Oshvalen Light to return the powers the Elite Guard had shared amongst the other Stern Ritter, and in the next page, the Amaya, who could cut Lily Barrow's shots before, has now had his entire shoulder eviscerated. Lily Barrow then describes that the reason his shots were ineffective against the barrier around them prior to this, and why they could originally be cut in two by Nehemiah, was because they were not using the power of the X-Axis. Ah. What makes this interesting is that Lily Barrow shot down multiple of the illusionary cities that the Zero Division had prepared in advance, and had complete confidence that his bullets could shoot them all down if they were real, then found out they were fake, and this was before having his power returning himself by New Hubbard. Mm. Lily Barrow states that when he fires his sniper rifle, known as Diagram, that there is no projectile fire between the barrel and what it's aimed at. Huh. You might recall that when Uriu knocked Ichigo off of the Soul Palace, it appears Lily Barra fired a shot at Ichigo to guarantee his death, as Uriu's plan of letting him fall to his death was suspect to Lily. When rereading these chapters, I notice that he doesn't fire one of the shots he did against Nimaya, but instead he fires a normal arrow to finish him off. Oh, okay. Or does he? Yeah. If you take an even closer look at this page, you'll notice there is an extra line drawn on the page next to his sniper, signifying that Udyu fired another arrow to convince Lily and the others that he was loyal to them by finishing off Ichigo, huh. while also giving Ichigo the ability to catch his arrow and pretend to be hit, because he wouldn't be able to stop Lily by his x-axis round from hitting him. Very quick thinking from Udyu. Very quick. As I stated by name before, Diagram is his bow or Heiliger Bogan. He can even regenerate the barrel of said sniper and fight with it at both close range and afar. So cool. Although the barrel is removed multiple times, this doesn't stop him at all in combat. With his diagram, he can one-shot basically anyone except Shunsue, as Shunsue traps him in his Shikai's game called Daruma-san Ga Koronda, which is described Red, like, as quite similar to Red Light Green. Light. Right. Throughout their battle, Shunsue keeps complimenting his speed, and he gets blitzed a few times. Along with this, he claims Lily Barra is the first to properly dodge his shadow on the first try. Crazy. Inherently making his base form faster than even Resurrection Coyote Stark, who has some very impressive speed feats and is complimented. Well, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Jesus. 
One of the reasons why I wanted to list this in the video is because Shunsui in particular is extremely adept at using Shunpo, and Yamamoto is even impressed by how fast and how far he can travel in a single step. Not only was this a big deal in the Soul Society arc, but part of this is demonstrated when Shunsui locates Lilibara from afar, travels to him, and Lily can still avoid all attacks at close range and return fire, wounding him greatly. Mental. From what I can tell also, Lilibara did not use Hidden Kyaku, the Quincy version of Shunpo, in any of these exchanges, which is super impressive. The power of the X axis. Here we go. Lilibara admits he is holding back his ability to passively always be intangible. Just like how his sniper rounds can penetrate anything, he himself can penetrate objects coming into contact with his body like Zanpak toe, mm -hmm. arrows, and anything else that may physically harm him. By using the quintessence of the X-axis, which is activated by him opening his left eye, he becomes intangible. He claims he does not usually open his left eye as it is unfair to sinners. The one granted power first <laughs> which by his majesty, like, what? his majesty's masterpiece, the one closest to God. To have his eyes opened a third time in battle is utterly unacceptable. Whoa. If you notice when reading this fight, there are a lot of artistic design choices made by Mr. Kubo in relation to eyes. Mm. Lilibara's closed eye is opposite to Shunsui's wounded eye. Shunsui's Which is very interesting, I do like that. Covered up as himself. And the Asuchi of Nanao Zanpakuto has the opposite of Shunsui and his Asuchi. Alongside this, there is a consistent theme about viewing God's light, eyes being dried out from looking at sinners, mm -hmm. and Lilibara even being defeated by his own light being reflected at himself. Ironic, right? Yeah. An underlying narrative of good versus evil, the sinner versus the do-gooder. Fun little fact too, you might have noticed I said that Lilibara was the first Quincy to be bestowed power by Yuha Bath, even though the manga page on the screen stated he was the last. Well, this is due to a translation error with oh, Viz has very interesting. in the official online English release. It makes me wonder what else they've mistranslated, yeah. and even while reading the manga myself, I found things like this. This would explain why the Mugen is so inconsistently translated as infinite, then almost infinite various times. Oh god. No shade on Viz, by the way. I'm yeah, sure it's just, like, these mistakes happen, don't they? It does, but it does change things up. These kind of errors cannot continue to happen. Unlike most of the other Quincy, Lilibara actually has more than one transformation. After his X-axis ability is properly explained to Shunsui, Lily transforms into his false standing and falls into the same fate as Zomari. Not exactly a pumpkin, but yeah. Mm. Tripped out and honestly pretty clean looking with his sniper to these two forms. Yeah, they were weird, man. It's like some, some of the transformations, it's like, what? Why are you doing that? Designs. Though the point of said designs is more so intended to signify, again, more direction towards a battle of biblical messages. Yeah, I suppose you have the talking gods and not like it needs to look like yeah, something that's human and frankly scary pretty rather than some beautiful Aryan looking individual with white wings. Mm. And thus explains why Lilibara's designs look so weird in both transformations. Once in his first form, he starts to teleport around the battlefield in a similar manner to Admiral Kazara from One Piece, and his intangibility has become so mm, useful like that lightning just like zzz. attacks have no effect. While in this form, known as Divine Judgment, he can shoot his X-axis rounds multiple times at once and has much more variety Which is just of insane. attacks. Light of Judgment, Light of Purity, Trumpet of Light, Light Beams, Light Rounds... Light, Light, light everything Light. <laughs> this could also be more impressive than it seems, as it appears Shonsui's Bankai is dictating the darkness in the space around them, not blocking out a hypothetical star. It's a little more complicated than it seems. He is also able to fly in the sky where flight is not possible for Shinigami, further Which is showing cool. he is one with light, and doesn't really follow the conventional laws of Bleach that many other characters obey. With his body, he can also regenerate to some extent and can form his body into weird shapes. It should also be a compliment to Shunsui that he can continuously avoid these light-based attacks, and Lilibara has to keep teleporting across the battlefield to eventually catch him, as Shunsui is trying to move far away to activate Bankai because he believes he will die. Honestly, it was just bad luck that of all Shinigami, Lilibara had to face one of the most... Yeah, he really did, like... <laughs> if he fought anyone else, Along with would have been a better job. Shunsui is also a prodigy, who even Gemurusai Yamamoto had respect for. Enough respect to make him the head captain. But even still, he survived all stages of the Bankai, the execution slash, transformed, and was then forced to face a Zumpak toe that was basically made to combat individuals like himself. Yeah. If he was fighting such a weird, like, ass puddle thing, that. He could have easily 
it just came out of nowhere. It's like what? In fact, he could have did the same to Shunsui here. It's still very frustrating that Yu Hubbuck didn't assist Lilibara or the Miracle. Having Lilibara healed and not absorbing the Miracle would have essentially made those three unstoppable. Definitely. Here. Jesus you Christ. If you want the Miracle, you should definitely mm -hmm. leave it over low and like this video. Even after being cleansed into many pieces of light by Nanaho's god slaying royal household up up toe that looks like the paddle from The Simpsons, mm. Lily Burra then turns into weird light bird things that land in the Soul Society, and these birds are still strong enough to spam light shots and claim, although they've been weakened extremely and lost their shrift powers, they still have the confidence to wipe everything out as a way to get back at Shroom's way. Though his intangibility and X axis rounds are now gone, his power is still so impressive that he can easily break through the barrier of the Soul Society and cause extreme damage when he lands. If this feat is in fact true, Lily Burrow in his most weakened state is as lethal to the Soul Society as Volstendig Bambiero and Grevy's Meteor. Wow. It would also be consistent with his city destroying feats where he was able to do this before even using his real power. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that it would take longer to accomplish these feats in this like weird bird form, but it's still pretty scary to think he's that strong. They're also pretty fast. Though his body is now very susceptible to being harmed as shown by Kira. I'd also like to point out that during Lilibara's battle with Shunsui, Shunsui's Bankai is able to affect him, even though Lilibara is clearly much more powerful, yeah. meaning it doesn't fall under the battle of spiritual pressure law laid out by Aizen when he talks to Soivon. If you recall in the Soul Society arc, Yamamoto states that he considers Ukitake and Shunsui transcendent in battle and impressive together as a team. This was in reference to when they were younger, and obviously by this time Shunsui has gotten stronger, and Urukitake was containing the Mimihagi inside of him, a power which even impressed Yuha Bark and scared all the elite guard. They Urukitake were not very happy about that. Urukitake considers the release of Yamamoto transcendent, and when Kenpachi returns from his training in the Muriken, he himself has also reached transcendence, as he could not be sensed by normal Shinigami. There was a major emphasis by Shunsui to make sure Kenpachi was their nuclear bomb, otherwise the war would be lost. And for Shunsui as head captain to not be transcendent would be narratively odd, especially as he has naturally gotten stronger with age, mm -hmm. compared to the statement which talks about him and his youth. This isn't to say he is always transcendent when walking around in base form, but only during the release of Bonkai. And Lilibara survived me. all of its attacks and then transformed. Shunsui's Shikai release against Sarg made him as strong as some Shinigami going Bonkai, and if he is already a top 5% character, going Bonkai and getting an increase of around 10 times his power with his mastered Bankai, would definitely put him in the echelon that Yamamoto described. There's a reason Yamamoto had such good words to say about Shunsui and Ukitake. They are extremely talented. Upon the release of they his are up there. <laughs> they are Bankai really, really up there. Ichigo and gives him the chills. Someone who easily scales above this eyes in here, who is considered transcendent and couldn't be sensed by some of the strongest characters in the series. This is Ichigo after his training with the Zero Division, where he attains his real Zanpakuto powers. Point being, Lily Burr is disgustingly strong and potentially in his second form could be considered transcendent. The line is slowly falling apart. What is this? Each individual's stamina, adaptability to the re of use high ratio density environment, and the severity of their wounds. All those factors are splitting up the pack. And. All living creatures die when they stray from the pack. All I have to do is wait. As they stray from the pack, one by one. So cool. I'd be scared too. How could you not be? I understand. Not even knowing where you're being shot from. Losing men, one after another. By shots from far, far This is so cool. isn't afraid. He's either just a fool or crazy. Wow. No matter how beautifully a pack is unified, it will collapse with a single act of folly by an idiot. Well, that was real put together. I like that. I've seen countless packs act like that. I was hoping you solar birds wouldn't be one of them. That was a cool way to end the video. Whoa, cool. Whoa. Yeah, guys, ridiculous. And I would like more videos on the Stone Ritters and that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing these fights animated. And um, it's going to be boss. 
Thanks to my patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video I upload, link is in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar a month is all that helps for the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you guys very much for that. And thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, and really leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos. And I'll see you guys. All you guys, next time.